We issued our first ever Do Not Buy recommendation last year for MSI Score Liquid 240R AIO. Yes guys, I know Greg Salazar made a video also about the 240R but ours actually came out earlier than his. So we were the first one to cry danger about the 240R. I have Windows. Pero saan ko kukuha ng legit windows? Daming options, daming prices. Ah, halito! Buti na lang, may cdkeyoffers.com Madali lang ang order! Search for the software you need, add to cart, daan ka sa payment options nila. Wala pang 5 minutes, finished! May legit working cdk ka na para sa windows mo. Gamitin ang aming code para makakuha pa ng discounts. Kaya kung naghahanap ka ng legit, mura, at original software, Check out cdkeyoffers.com After we made that video, a lot of people chimed in on the comments saying that yes, they had the same AIO and it also wasn't cooling their CPU properly. MSI has since released the V2 version of the 240R. I don't know if it's any good because we've never tried it out. But MSI did want us to reconsider their AIOs, so they sent over the Mag Core Liquid C240 and the Meg Core Liquid S360. These items were sent to us by the brand for review, but the brand had no say in what we had to say about them. The first thing we did was leave both of those AIOs on for three months straight, 24-7. No breaks, no shutdowns. It got to the point that the guards in our building were a bit concerned because everything was off in the shop except for the ARGB lighting of those AIOs. We did that because we noticed that the problems with the 240R started to crop up around 6 months after we installed them. So to recreate an average 6 month runtime, we left those AIOs on without arrest, without shutdown. And I'm happy to say that after that stress test, both AIOs are still working without any problems. We haven't seen any dips in cooling performance. Both the CPUs we have them installed on are running fine. Can't make a proper conclusion from a sample size of just one. We sold 14 of the 240Rs and more than 7 came back, so that's more than a 50% failure rate. But at least the samples that we got of the C240 and the S360 seem to be working properly, even after prolonged use. Another good point for the C240 and the S360 is that they are compatible with Intel's latest 12th gen. They're also compatible with the upcoming AMD Ryzen 7000 series, the AM5 socket. So if you have Ryzen now, you can safely upgrade to the C240 or the S360. And then when you change your CPU later on, those coolers will still be compatible. So nice forward thinking on the part of MSI. The C240 has the same consumer profile as the 240R, a mid-priced, well-performing AIO. It comes with two ARGB fans, and the CPU block is quite unique with a faceted, blocky design. Each of the facets has its own light. So there are a lot of things that RGB fans might like about this particular AIO. Personally, I've grown bored with the CPU blocks of a lot of the AIOs. They all look very cookie cutter. So this is a refreshing change, a different take on what a CPU block can look like. And it maximizes the ARGB potential of such a wide space. Aesthetics, of course, are subjective, so it's up to the user if they dig this particular style, but it works for me. Performance-wise, the C240 is mid-range. It wasn't a superlative performance, but neither was it subpar. We did put the C240 through an extreme test, and more on that later. The S360 is one of MSI's premium AIOs, and while it doesn't come with any RGB, it does come with a gorgeous 2.4-inch IPS display. Displays on AIOs are becoming a thing. The NZXT Kraken Z series is one of our popular sellers in the shop. So MSI is jumping on that bandwagon, although they're doing it quite well with this beautiful screen. But props to ROG, which I think was the first one that put a display on an AIO with their Ryujin series AIO. So this display can have all of the usual bells and whistles. You can have it display rig stats such as the temperature of your CPU, GPU, whether it's going to rain today, and various other information. Or you can have it do something a bit more fun like display your favorite GIF or video. The CPU block does come with a magnetic cover which makes things a bit cleaner looking if a bit bulkier looking. And I know the cover doesn't have any magnifying effect, it's just a screen, but the LCD screen itself does look a bit clearer and better for whatever reason once you put the cover on it. 
Lastly, another interesting thing about the CPU block and MSI is just really cramming all of the innovation in here is that there's a fan inside it. Not to help cool the CPU, but to help cool the components surrounding the CPU, such as the VRMs of the motherboard, as well as the M.2. Interesting approach and certainly welcome for performance rigs where you want to keep those components cool. Turning out to performance, we tested both of these AIOs on the hottest of the hottest, the i9-12900KF. We ran Cinebench R23 for 30 minutes, so that's a CPU load of 100%, and then we recorded the average temperature of each AIO as well as the max temp reached. Our baseline was the Kraken Z73, which yielded an average temperature of 89.5 degrees as well as a max temp of 95 degrees. Starting with the MSI AIOs, the C240 had a bit of trouble with the i9-12900KF. The average temp was 99 degrees and the max temp reached was 100 degrees and the CPU thermal throttled. It made itself slower because it recognized it was pumping out too much heat. Basically, the C240 couldn't keep up with the CPU, but that's not really a knock on the C240. If you're rocking a 12900, you generally will have better cooling than a 240mm RAD. The S360 was able to keep up with the 12900, so there was no thermal throttling. However, temperatures were not that great. The average temp was around 92 degrees, with the highest temp reached of 96 degrees. So the numbers of the X360 were around the same ballpark as the Kraken, although the Kraken did consistently score better, meaning it had lower temperatures than the S360. Interestingly, the best performer among all of the AIOs we tried with the 12900 was a deep cool 360mm RAD AIO. We can't show it yet because it's under embargo, so I can't talk much about it. But the temperatures reached by the Deepcool AIO were a lot better than any of the others we tested. If you want to hear more about that AIO, we'll be coming up with a review video on the release date of May 25. To be honest, I thought we'd get better cooling from the S360 as the Meg line is the premium line of MSI. And the S360 netted as well Tom Hardware's Editor's Choice Award. So I was expecting better temps. It was able to keep up with the 12900 which is a furnace of a CPU, but just barely. So the C240, I'd give 4 out of 5 candies. A mid-priced AIO with good performance, and a particular shout-out to RGB fans. You might be interested in the aesthetic and overall lighting scheme of the C240. The S360 will be giving 3.5 out of 5 candies. Interesting ideas, such as the massive and very beautiful screen, as well as the fan integrated into the CPU block to help cool the mobile components, are a bit let down by its pedestrian performance. But at the end of the day, at least we didn't experience the same problems with either of these AIOs that we did with the deplorable and not missed 240R. TFW. And thank you to our top fans. Na afford na namin to na to. De joke lang. Thank you to Leah Magnaye, Ian Meru, ITX Addict, John Ruben Ocha, Christian Espinosa, and Rafael James. Thank you for supporting the channel.